Hey, what's up artists, I'm Jonathan, and in today's video we'll take a look at Godot. More specifically, how you can create this ASCII shader using the Visual Shader Editor. All assets and the final shader can be downloaded from my Gumroad page. Godot is a 100% free game engine and pretty beginner friendly. Because my background lays in Blender, which makes me familiar with nodes, I first started with a shader project. And now I'll show you how to recreate it. With that said, let's get started. Let's start off by creating a new project that we can give a name right here. And now let's click on create new folder and create an edit. I'll use a 2D scene to create the shader, but later we can also use it in 3D scenes. So let's click on 2D scene. And with the node 2D selected, let's press Ctrl and A and add in a canvas layer node. Another node we have to add is the color rectangle, which we want to set to full rect right here. To later test the shader, we can just drag and drop this default icon into here, which will right now not be visible, but it will be later. To create the actual shader, we want to select our color rectangle and under material, click new shader material, click on this material icon and choose new visual shader. We can now click on this visual shader right here to get to the shader editor. The only thing that we have to change now before we can start with the shader is to change the mode from spatial to canvas item. We can now start with our shader. The first step is to create a grayscale image of everything that is behind this colored rectangle and then pixelize this grayscale image. We can then assign an ASCII character to each brightness value of this grayscale pixelation. Okay, we can now right click to create a new shader node. And the first node we want to create is the texture one right here. So double click on it and let's choose screen. We can now plug this output RGB value into the color input and you'll be able to see the icon that we previously imported. But it is flipped, this is because we haven't assigned any UV coordinates to the screen texture. For this, let's search for UV and choose screen UV. And once we plug them in, everything is back to normal. Grayscaling an image is actually pretty easy, because Godot provides a grayscale function, which just takes a color vector as an input, and the output can be directly plugged into the color input of our output node. Great, we now have a simple grayscale image of everything that is placed behind the color rectangle. But now we actually need to pixelate it. To pixelate it, we want to manipulate the input UV coordinates. We do this with vector operations as well as vector functions. The first vector operation we need to use is multiply, which then goes into a floor function. Now we can copy and paste this vector multiply node and set it to divide. And after that, we can plug this output into the UV input. Of course, right now, you'll not be able to see anything. This is because we have to assign a vector to the multiply and divide node. To easily do this, we can use the vector compose node and just type in values for X and Y. We do not need Z because this shader works in 2D space. So let's plug this in and I changed the values to 10, but we still can't see anything. If we move around, you'll be able to see rectangles popping up. So the values are way too low. Let's change them to 100. And now we can start to see our icon right here. But we have a problem and this is that the pixelation isn't squared. This is because we don't have a square aspect ratio, but the aspect ratio right now is 16 by nine. So let's plug in for example, 160 and 90. And you'll be able to see that now the pixelation is squared. But of course we don't want to restrict the user to a single aspect ratio. So let's use the screen pixel size value to procedurally control the pixelation. To now use this as the input vector for the multiply and divide node, we first want to add a vector divide operation. For the top vector, put in 1, 1 and 1 for all three axes and divide it through our screen pixel size. We need to do this because this yields the inverse of the actual screen size. Now we can plug this vector into both function, but right now it isn't actually pixelized. So let's search for multiply 
And now let's multiply this vector by a certain value, for example 0.25 on both the x and y axis and you'll be able to see that we get a pixelization effect. This pixelization effect is now also not limited to a certain aspect ratio. We can now try running this scene, so let's click on this icon right here or press F6 and it asks us to save the scene, so let's do this and you'll be able to see that we can resize our window and the pixelization is still happening correctly. Awesome! To make this a bit better, let's search for vector compose and plug this vector compose output into this input right here. And let's search for a scalar constant, which we can plug into the vector compose node. And now we can control the pixelization with this scalar constant. Now we can add the actual ASCII characters. If you download the project files from the video description, you'll be able to get these 10 pre-made ASCII characters. All of these PNG images are 32 by 32 pixels and I made sure to have a gradual fall off in brightness from all the characters. To use these characters, we can just copy and paste this ASCII folder into our project folder that we defined at the start of this video. And now if we go back to Godot, you'll be able to see that the ASCII folder has been imported with all of the characters in it. But we actually need to change the import settings. So let's select all of them and in import, Let's uncheck Detect 3D and Filter and change Repeat to Enabled. And now we can click on Re-Import. And just like this, all of these characters have been re-imported. To use them in our shader, we can just drag and drop them into here. And for the sake of this video, I'm only doing two brightness levels. The first thing we need to do is to also tile these characters across our screen. So for this, let's add in basic UV coordinates and plug them into the UV input. But you can see that if we use the RGB output, this doesn't look right, because for these characters we actually need to use the alpha output, and now you can see that the add is displayed on the screen. To now tile it, we want to multiply the UV coordinates with this multiply function right here, and plug these new UV coordinates into the input. Of course, this is a bit much tiling, so let's change the scalar to 0.05, so we actually get a fitting view. Awesome! We can now plug these UV coordinates into all the other textures that you have imported for your shader. All that's left to do is to assign these characters to different brightness values of the grayscale color function. For this video, I will use this character for brightness values between 0.7 and 1, and this character for brightness values between 0.4 and 0.7. Of course, you can extend this for an entire gradient. To actually do the assigning, we'll use conditional nodes. So I tried using these conditional functions, but they don't work with what I want to do. So I'll just use the vector if one. We can now plug in the grayscale output into the A input, and for B choose 0.7. We now want to plug in 1 for each value of the A greater than B setting. And if I check the output, you can see that all of these are values that are between 0.7 and 1. Let's copy and paste this node and do the same for 0.4, meaning that all of these values are values between 0.4 and 1. What we now need to do is to subtract them from one another, just like this, so we only get values between 0.4 and 0.7. Now we can use a multiply node to multiply this texture with the result of the first if node, which gives us this ASCII character on all spots where the brightness is above 0.7. And let's multiply the second character with the subtract output which gives us this character in all of the spots where the brightness is between 0.4 and 0.7. And now we can just add both of these results together for the final ASCII result. And if we have a look at this in rendered view, you can see that everything works as expected. Of course, this isn't really impressive. This becomes a lot more fun if you actually view bigger pictures or entire scenes. But yeah, that's basically it. This is how we can use Godot to create a basic ASCII shader. If you enjoyed this video that was a bit different from what I do usually, consider liking and subscribing and we'll see each other in the next video next Saturday.